Hello everybody, welcome to my RC Plane channel. I'm James, and today I'm gonna to be taking a look at this P51D Mustang kit I have. And I thought what I would do is open up the box, take a look at the parts, and talk a little bit about the kit itself, the manufacturer. And you know, right now I'm in the process of building a Balsa USA smoothie, and probably almost about halfway done with that. So I still have a little ways to go, but I thought I'd start I kind of started thinking about maybe the future builds that I'm doing and I have a few kits on hand and this is one of them so I thought maybe I would take a little bit of break from the the current build that I'm doing and just talk about this kit I'll get right back onto the the, the smoothie here in the next video but I thought I would take a little bit of a break and take a look inside this box and kind of share that with everybody all right so as you can see here this kit was made by Royal and Royal was known for making really good quality kits, really good quality parts, and detailed kits, complex kits. So these are pretty much known for, you know, sort of like an advanced modeler. I'm not saying I'm an advanced modeler. This kit's going to be a challenge for me, but the kits are definitely were were known for being really high quality RC plane kits. Now Royal sort of has a relationship with another company, which was called Murataka. I think I'm saying that correctly, Murataka or Marataka. And they're out of Japan. And they were actually the original designers and actually put together a lot of the kits that Royal eventually, I guess through a licensing agreement or whatever, they started selling them in the States. Royal was based in Denver, Colorado. And they again, they had this, this agreement or relationship with Murataka to basically maybe redistribute or repackage their kits under their own brand name. And that's what this is right here. If you look on the side of the box, it's really faint to see, but it says made in Japan. So this is one of those kits. Now I think that this kit, even though it's probably been around for a while in terms of its origin when it was originally produced, this kit was probably packaged, if you will, probably somewhere in the 1990s. I, I don't know for sure, but I just kind of get that feeling. So based on the kind of quality and, and some of the stuff that we'll see inside here. All right, so this was designed for an engine, two cycle engine, a 0.6, Six zero to point eight zero cubic inch two stroke, and it's got a wingspan of sixty four inches, sixty four point three quarter inches, has a fuselage fuselage length of fifty five and three quarter inches, wing area of seven hundred and seventy seven square inches, and a scale ratio of one and three quarter inch equals one foot. Now what I did was I got some specifications for you know the original P fifty one Mustang, which I have here, and I just wrote them down. And the original P51 had a wingspan of about 37 feet and a length of about 32 and a quarter feet. And this, this kit doesn't give you the actual scale. So all I did was convert my inches to feet and then I divided that into the, to the real numbers or the real dimensions for the, for the P51. And I came up with about a 1 7 scale. This box is actually just completely packed. It's kind of hard to tell, but it's completely packed with with material so this is definitely a hefty kit all right so one thing that I really like about this kit is that it's the paint scheme and the markings are this olive drab color with a light gray on the on the bottom and of course it has these invasion stripes on the on the rear portion of the plane and then it has this the markings tangerine so I think this is kind of a unique kit because or at least the unique scheme because a lot of times you see the p51 and it's modeled in that that bare metal finish which looks awesome but it's pretty popular but I thought this would be this is pretty cool just because it looks a little bit different and I really like the, the paint scheme and we'll take a look at that inside I think there's going to be some decals and some other information on that now what I did what I like to do when I'm going to be building something that's sort of scale or like that I like to kind of get a little bit of research going and I was able to get this walk around um, this is a squadron publications squadron signal publications and these are awesome for reference, and I get to probably get a few more references. But what's really cool about it is, among other things, is that right here, this picture, right there, that's the actual picture of the tangerine, I guess, taking off. Now, the plane was stationed in, in England for the later part of World War II, and so this is a picture probably in that at that location yeah so really cool glad I found it. and there's other pictures I actually have some other pictures that I obtained online of it 
and I'll share some of those. But anyhow, that's pretty that's pretty cool. In fact, 414507 on the tail, it's the same exact thing there. So yeah, pretty pretty neat. So I'll be using this. I don't know if I'm going to be doing you know really highly detailed scale model of the plane. In fact, I know I won't be. But I may add some features to it just to kind of kick it up a little bit in terms of its appearance, its scale appearance. So I'll set this aside for now. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pop this box open. I'm kind of doing this upside down with the camera. Okay, so here's some plans, and here are some detailed sheets. I'm going to put that aside. All right, so here it has a little uh, general insignia and marking placement sheet. That's pretty cool. Kind of rough. Just references. And those are for the decals. I'll put that over here. Here is the, what is this? Okay, well, this is just instructions for the decals. And that's just from Royal. Royal Products, Denver, Colorado. All right, here's the instruction guess pamphlet pamphlet and you can see here it doesn't have let me kind of get up here you can see here it doesn't have um, any photographs it looks like this thing was typed out and just kind of photocopied and it's not very long so and that's one of the things that's sort of noted about these kits is that the instructions are a little bit on the bare side or the skimpy side but yeah so that's the instruction manual Probably only about less than 20 pages. All right, so the other thing that the kits come with are these scale cockpit kits. So sort of like a kit within a kit, if you will. And this is the instruction manual for that. Now those pieces are inside the box. We'll take a look at those. But you can see this is just basically a detailed instruction set for constructing the detailed cockpit. So that's that's really, really cool. And I think back in the day, you could probably buy these, these cockpit kits separately. But in any case, this comes with one. All right, let me put that aside over here. And let me see. All right, so these are the plans. Here are the decals. Okay, so there it is, tangerine. And the markings for it. Decals actually look like they're in pretty good shape. I was kind of worried that because of the age, maybe the decals would not be in very good shape. They look pretty good. So we'll check those out. I'm going to put those off to the side. All right, so now plans. You can kind of see, obviously, this got a little bit of age. These rubber bands that were in the box are kind of rotted. So I got two sheets of plans. I'll take a look at those last. And those are, I've looked at them briefly before, and they're really nice plans. So. Take a look at those. Move this off to the side. Okay, so there's the kit or something else here. All right, yeah, this is a basically an information kind of poster. A little bit of history of the of the airplane itself, Tangerine. Make a little bit of history of the squadron, showing the showing a typical pilot. A little profiles here so yeah lots of lots of detailed information they gave you in the kit all right so this is the actual cockpit detailed kit and I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out of here carefully it's just molded plastic obviously that you have to cut out but this looks like it's the one of the side kind of side panels. Oops, let's pull the rest of this. Let me put this down here. There's the seat. There's another side panel there. This must be behind the seat. Details. Down here is the. Actually, it's got a little bit of damage. It looks like it got a little bit of crush damage and kind of a little bit of deterioration, but that's not a big deal. And here's the instrument panel. I don't know. Oh, I think these are pieces that you probably cut out. But yeah, so there's the plastic parts. 
Then there are a few. There's the instrument panel hood. It has to be cut out and folded. Detail sets. Here are some, I guess these are caught. I don't think this is a sticker. Yeah, it looks like you probably have to cut those out and glue them on for the instruments. And then here's some more details. Rudder pedals. Wow, rudder pedals. I don't know how much of this you're going to see. And then a few other things in the bag here. Here's a little detail set. It's got some string and some other things, probably for some of the seat details and such. Pins, I don't know. Interesting, interesting. And this is the seat back. So again, a little bit more. These are kind of, I guess, cut them out and shape them as, as needed. So anyway, so that's the detailed the cockpit detail set. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at some of this, some of these parts, some of the wood. Now these kits are known for requiring a lot of shaping and cutting, and you can tell that's going to be the case here. Lots of blocks of wood. I'm going to move these, kind of carefully put them over here. These hardwood, these are probably engine mounting rails. I think maybe maybe not. They look different sizes. I guess it would be. Probably something like that. Yeah, EM, EM1 and 2, so that probably means engine mount 1 and 2 on there. It's over there. Let's see. Now these kits are die cut. These are not laser, laser cut parts, but there's some parts there. So let me just grab some of this stuff out. I kind of always worry about taking everything out because then I got to get it back in and it can be a little difficult to do so, but let's go ahead and take a look anyhow. Obviously lots of lots of stock material as well as material that's pre-cut for us. Hardware set inside here. Alright, so here's the canopy. That looks looks generally okay for a kit this old that's been sitting somewhere. Alright, here's a bag of goodies, a bunch of little blocks. Things are all nicely marked though. You see lots of lots of the blocks are marked. So that's really helpful. That's really nice. This one here. Here's another one. A few more. Wow. And this is a little hardware set. Careful with that. So yeah, so this has a, it comes with fixed landing gear, you can see here, but I'm planning on putting retractable landing gear on. I don't know which one I'm going to use yet, or the style, I mean the brand yet, but I know I'm going to go with some type of retractable landing gear for both the main landing gear and I think the tail is retractable also. And there's other parts in here, looks like some of these are probably some of the aileron or flap control rods and linkages and such. So, a nice little hardware kit there more pieces yeah so those are the again these are die cut ribs they seem to be in pretty good quality pretty good shape at least I can pull this off here yes yeah, so that's rubber band rotted rubber band on there but yeah those look pretty pretty decent I mean the wood itself looks pretty good I don't see any sort of damaged parts I don't see any little bit of discoloration there but I don't obviously you don't see any mold and I don't see any really anything that's deformed but yeah that's a lot of that's a lot of wood in here let me put this down here okay so this is so these are the the plywood kind of like the bulkheads and some of the stronger pieces and it's going to give you a nice index sheet here you can kind of see right here of all the parts so yeah that's really nice I mean this is nicely sealed and it looks like it's in actually the kit looks like it's in really really good shape so yeah, boy, a lot of lot of wood, a lot of lot of woodwork to do on this kit, but it's gonna be gonna be pretty fun, I think. It's gonna be a challenge, that's for sure. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get all this stuff back in the box, and then I'm gonna open up and take a look at the plans. All 
All right, so that wasn't too bad getting all back in there. I was a little bit worried about that, but all right, so right now let's go ahead and move this box out of the way. All right, so I don't think I'm gonna be able to get the plants completely on the camera from this angle. So I'm gonna open these up and then move the camera and look at some details on it. For now, let's go ahead and just open these plans. All right, so here is the one sheet. Wow. And this is the wing assembly instructions. Of course, you can see the wing right here. I'm assuming you build one and then flip it over and build the other one. We'll see about that. And what else here? So here's the elevator area back here. Yeah, these are nice big plans. These are nicely printed. These look like they're CAD, maybe printed from a computer generated. These are not hand drafted like some of the older kit instructions you can find. So that's the wing. And what I'll do is, let me just down here. Pop up this one. It's obviously going to be the fuselage. And there it is. That was a beautiful set of plans, really, really nice and clean. And it looks like there's lots of detail, so hopefully between the instructions and this, it should be hopefully more straightforward, but we'll we'll find out when we get there. All right, so hopefully my lighting's not too bad, but let's go ahead and take a look. So again, this is the fuselage plan set, and you can kind of see here, boy, lots of parts. So this is looking down. This, this half is looking down on the fuselage. This half is looking up at the fuselage. Here's some information on the cockpit. A lot of planking, everything's plank. So this, this plane is gonna be not covered with a fabric. It's gonna be covered with balsa sheeting. And then it's gonna be using the fiberglass technique to, to, to cover it. And then it'll be painted after that. So that's gonna give it a really nice looking finish. So here is some details on the construction of the fuselage showing the bulkheads. Very nice. Just a little profile looking through the, I guess it's the, that may be the, the rudder, I guess. I'm not sure. Here's an information or diagram of the plane itself. Very, very nice. Looking forward. Here's some specifications. It actually has some specifications of the real one right here. That's really cool. That gives you information on a scale prop. Here's some bulkheads over here. And here's the tail gear. Now I think I can make that a retractable tail gear. We'll find out. Here's the front section, sort of the nose. The hatch for the engine. They're very nicely detailed plans. And here's the landing gear. Now it is fixed landing gear and I think the the plans for the wing show show the retractable option. Here's like a so this is basically a you know a scale feature showing the in, this kind of intake cooler below the plane right here. And what else here? Here's some profiles looking through the through the fuselage. There's some rudder details. The rudder and the, and the elevator are built up like the wing. They have ribs and a lot of little features. All right, very nice. Okay, so that's the generally looking down at the fuselage. I mean, here's some instructions. <laughs> that's for the rudder. The fin. The exhaust manifold is also a scale feature. I know some people actually build workable a workable exhaust manifold like this. I may look into something like that. Here's the engine mount. This is optional, I guess, coming straight up. Most likely, yeah, the engine will probably be inverted. Kind of keep it concealed better. All right, so there you go. There's the fuselage. All right, so here are the wing, the wing plan. It's got an aileron. It's got flap. And like the wing and the stabilizer and the and the rudder, 
the flap and the aileron has to be built up using these ribs. It's pretty cool there. And here's a side side view of the wing construction. All right. And here are all the ribs on the plan. So that's really good because if you do make a mistake, you can actually re reproduce these parts. And over here is the option for the retractable landing gear. I'm kind of showing you here. Here's the solid one. All right, so here's the horizontal stabilizer, the elevator. Again, showing the the ribs for the elevator itself and the ribs for the horizontal stabilizer. Of course, all these parts are going to have to get carved and shaped. Okay. So yeah, very, very nice, very nicely detailed and well put together instructions. All right, so I got everything put back in the box. Now, before I go, I do want to mention a few things. So one thing I did say, right, was that this kit is relatively r rare. I'd say it's rare because the manufacturer is no longer around, but you can find full kits on online auction sites like eBay. And sometimes you can probably find them if you search the RC forums, people are still selling them. And, but if you can't find it, there are other options. So because these plan, the, the plans for these kits are, I think, pretty readily available online for free. You can download them from a variety of websites, I, I believe. You can look at something like um, Outer Zone, which is out of the UK. They allow you to download plans from companies that are no longer in business. There's also one called Hip Pocket. I think it's here in the United States. And there's got to be a whole bunch more. You can just search for different plans and you can come across these old Muritaka or these old Royal kit plans. And as you can see, some of them have all the have all of the profiles and you can cut your pieces out of them if you wanted to do that. The other thing is that the challenge with doing that is trying to find like the cockpit or if you had maybe a cow on a, on a plane you're looking for, it may be hard to find those. But there are actually companies out there that are still making cows that fit these airplanes in the scales they are. So that's also an option is to look and kind of see what's available. One thing that you'll find if you want to look for something like this is what they call short kits. And a short kit is when somebody has basically cut out all of the wood for you and they provide the, the, the wood and things like the plywood, bulkheads, things like the ribs, and that's what they provide you in the, in the short kit. They don't provide you with sort of the basic stock items like sheet balsa or some of the, some of the, the, the you know, rectangular longerons and things like that. That you have to get on your own, but that's easy enough to obtain because it's just basic balsa wood stock from, you can get them from a place like Balsa USA actually. So there are options to get a short kit of this or other planes like this. The other thing too is that, you know, this is a very popular airplane for RC modelers and the P-51 Mustang is made not only there there are there may be some kits available I'm not sure who is actually making a kit like this but there are still a few manufacturers out there I believe and not only that you can find the ARFs and there's plenty of those out there so it's a pretty popular kit or a pretty popular subject so my intention is when I get to building this I don't necessarily want to focus on building the Royal P-51 Mustang. I'm going to be focusing on building an RC P-51 Mustang kit, not particular to any brand, even though I'm going to be building this one. Okay, and as I mentioned a little earlier, I am in the process of building a Balsa USA smoothie, and I'm about halfway done with that. And it's going to take me a little bit longer to finish that up, but this definitely is the next kit on my agenda to build. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a challenge. It's going to be a challenge for me. There's, it seems like there's a lot to do on this. It's going to take some time, but I'm looking forward to it. I haven't built a Warbird in a while, and I just think it's a really cool subject. So I hope you enjoyed kind of looking at this kit with me, going through the parts. It's always cool to go through a, go through a box like this. And I encourage you, if you're interested in this, you know, check around, check online, see what's available. And again, those short kits are available and other options. 
Anyhow, so thanks for watching my channel. I appreciate it, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.